Hey guys, welcome to LumoVest. In this video, we're going to dive deep into the calculations of the dividend payout ratio. We learned in the earlier video that the dividend payout ratio is calculated by dividing the total dividends by the net income or dividend per share by earnings per share. The formula is pretty easy, but just like the calculations for dividend yield, the trick is using the right numbers in order for the analysis to be meaningful. In this video, we'll go over some quick points that'll help you calculate the right metric. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel now so you get all our videos helping you become a sophisticated investor. The first question is, where do we find the numbers? The answer is that we would get these numbers from the company's financial statements. As a reminder, we usually want to look at the dividend metrics on an annualized basis so we want to look at the annual financial statements, not the quarterly or semi-annual statements. If you don't know how to pull the company's financial statements, you should take the Investor Resources course on our LumoVest website. Let's start with the first formula, total dividends divided by net income. The total dividends can be found on the cash flow statement and the net income is found on the income statement. So take Oracle, for example, we can see from its cash flow statement that its total dividends paid to shareholders came out to be about $2,631,000,000 in 2017. Its 2017 net income is on the income statement, and it's $9,335,000,000. So that's a dividend payout ratio of 28.2%. The thing you have to be careful here is that some companies that have preferred stocks will lump the dividends for both preferred and common stocks together into a single line item on the cash flow statement. But if we're analyzing the common stock of a company, we only want to include the dividends paid to the common shareholders. We don't want to include the preferred dividends because common stockholders aren't going to get these money, so including them would distort the numbers. A case in point is Nike. Nike has a preferred stock, and its $1.1 billion of total dividends on the cash flow statement includes the dividends paid to both common and preferred stockholders. If we're evaluating Nike's common stock, we can't use this number because it includes dividend payments that common shareholders won't be entitled to. So we'd have to switch gears and calculate the dividend payout ratio by dividing the dividend per share by the earnings per share. We can find these numbers at the bottom of Nike's income statement. Here's a tricky part about this formula that confuses a lot of people. Notice that there's two earnings per share numbers on the income statement, basic and diluted. And this is usually the case for most public companies. If you don't know the difference between the two, visit our website and check out the lesson on fully diluted shares outstanding. So which earnings per share metric should we use? For the purpose of calculating the dividend payout ratio, we should divide the dividend per share by the basic earnings per share, not the diluted number. In Nike's case, we're dividing 70 cents of dividend per share by the basic earnings per share of $2.56, which is about 27.3%. So let's quickly recap what we learned here. We can pull the numbers we need to calculate dividend payout from the company's annual financial statements we can find the total dividend number from the cash flow statement and the net income, dividend per share, and earnings per share from the income statement. When we calculate the dividend payout ratio using total dividends and net income, we need to be mindful not to include the dividends paid to the preferred shareholders. Otherwise, it would artificially inflate the payout ratio. When we calculate the dividend payout ratio using dividend and earnings per share, we should be mindful of the distinction between basic and diluted earnings per share. We should use the basic number in this case. So that's a closer look into the calculations behind dividend payout. Hope you guys found this helpful. Leave a comment below and remember to subscribe. See you next time.